So next up is a technology center. It's located right next to the Mongsta refinery, and it's the world's largest CO2 technology center, TCM. It has been conducting thousands of tests on different carbon capture technologies since 2012 on real fuel flue gas. Ismail Shah is the technical support manager. He has been working at the technology center since the beginning, and he will share some insights on the latest results from the test center. Thank you for joining us, Ismail, and thank you for sponsoring the conference. The floor is yours. Thank you, Evan, and thank you, Belona, for providing me the opportunity to talk about the Technology Center Mongsta, TCM, and how we are contributing to promote technologies which can tackle the CO2 challenge, and uh, is how we are helping both the technology vendors and technology owners to reduce the risk associated with technology upscaling. So here is the agenda I will be going through. Uh, I will talk a little, about, a little bit about the company and then the technology status and the achievements we have been having so far on support to commercial projects and the way forward. And if there were any questions, we can take that at the end. So I start with a short video. Yes, now you have the big picture, so let's dig a little bit into the t details of the company. TCM is a giant venture which was established back in 2009, and you can see the owners uh, of TCM, which is Gasanova, currently Equinor, Shell, and Total Energies. And the objectives of TCM is to support development and testing of carbon capture technologies at an early stage. This is to reduce technical HSC and financial risk, such that the technology once tested at DCM is mature enough to be deployed at a large scale. And this is an engineering scale facility. So this is the last stage you need before you go commercial. I will come back a little bit when we talk about the technology readiness level. So we are located adjacent to Equinor Monster Refinery. Uh, DCM is providing offices, utilities, 24-7 uh, operation, control room, lab, and workshop, warehouse space, and meeting rooms to support testing to the vendors. One of the key success factor is, of course, the facility, but in addition, the most important one is the competence, the competent engineers, researchers, and operators. And this is something we have been building for the last 10 years, and this is very unique given the scale and the complexity and all the flexibility and learnings we have been and challenges we have been solving through these 10 years. And of course, Equinor Monksa Refinery, they have also plans towards 2020, 2030 and visions to 2050, ensuring continuity at Monksa. Key facts about the technology center Monksa uh, is that we have two real flue gases coming from industrial sources. One of the industrial sources is called the residue fluidized catalytic cracker. So that's a cracker in the refinery, a flue gas coming from that one, and another flue gas source is coming from 
a combined cycle gas turbine, we call it CCGT. And the difference between these two flue gases is the one coming from the RFCC that is more concentrated in CO2 containing around 15% of CO2, which is very similar in flue gas composition to a coal power plant. And then the flue gas coming from, uh, maybe I can use the pointer, this is the power plant. So the flue gas coming from the power plant is containing about 3.5% CO2. And then in addition to this, we have the flexibility to recycle the captured CO2, so we can mimic anything between from 1 to 15%. So we can both recycle CO2 in the flue gas, and we can also dilute it with air. So we can mimic different type of industrial applications and can test the technology, how robust the technology is, how can the technology tolerate different impurities, different type of concentration, and what happens when you change different process parameters, for example, flow rates, temperature, capture rates, and, and so on. Uh, and in the new future, we are uh, get, getting some more flexibility where we will be able to go up to even 20%, and then we will be able to mimic even further uh, CO2 intensive industries like cement and steel production. Uh, we have the utilities on site, such as um, process water, seawater, electricity, instrument air, and such, which you need to, op to operate this type of technologies. Uh, you can see from this bird eye view picture, this is the refinery cracker, flue gas coming in, and this island, this is the technology center, Mongsta. We have two large-scale facilities. One is a generic amine plant. This was designed uh, and delivered by Akir solutions, and then chilled ammonia plant, this was uh, designed and delivered by Alstom. Uh, this is the utility areas, and this is the site for emerging technologies. So, of course, the CO2 challenge is too big. We need a large portfolio of technologies. We are, we, this challenge cannot be solved with, with only one technology. We need a large portfolio, and there might be in some cases, you have one technology which, which fits the purpose. In other cases, you need another technology. And of course, there is a need to innovate and further development. So this is not going to stop. Uh, of course, we have the first and second generation technologies for, let's say, the near term deployment now on market. I will come back a little bit to this uh, in my later slide. But for the future, the technology needs to be more efficient than what we have today. They need to be more compact. They need to be more COPEX, less COPEX intensive, more efficient. And those technologies are currently less mature compared to these ones. And we are also helping them, supporting them, and testing them at TCM. Uh, this one gives you a bit more realistic view how this looks like. So this is the Monster refinery and everything between from this road to this road. Between here, this is TCM. This is our administration building, a warehouse and lab. This is the chilled ammonia plant I was talking about. This is the tile absorber that is the amine technology or the amine plant. On utility area and yeah, the site for emerging technologies the combined cycle gas turbine, and the cracker. Yeah, uh, this is the site for emerging technologies where we have all uh, the utilities we need. For example, seawater we have available here, we have fire water, we have process water, and we have connection to both the flue gases. So we can test the new emerging technology with real flue gas coming from the CCGT, with, uh, from the RFCC, and we can mimic different impurities, like running with a very clean gas, see how robust the technology is. Because, of course, the technology is working when on the theoretical and the research scale, but in the industrial environment, you need to test it with uh, how the technology will be affected if you have impurities. Like you get particles, you get aerosols, you get dust or something. How will that affect the technologies? And that is something which is unique, and we can test it at TCM. So at TCM, we are uh, conducting two different type of uh, tests, and we are providing two different type of services. So the testing we are conducting, those are proprietary testing and non-proprietary. And advisory services, 
this is more to provide advisory services to, uh, to project owners in order to help them understand the risks and help them be a smart buyer of the technologies. So our scope in this case is not going into and selecting technology for the project owner, that is their work to do by themselves, but what we are doing is to help them to be able to ask the right questions and, and, and find the risk and then have proper mitigation in place so that the deployment of the technology and their project will be successful. And all this knowledge we are sharing with such type of projects is coming from our open, the non-proprietary solvent campaigns, because that is based on non-proprietary, and that is data we have been publishing and we, we can share with such type of projects. Yeah, now we go a bit more into details. Uh, now you can see on the top line, we have the property campaigns. So we have been developing several technology vendors. We have now created a market. There is a competition. There is a vendor to choose from where they can deliver technology for commercial deployment. And if I give you an example, for example, uh, Arcare Carbon Capture, uh, back in 2012, it was Arcare Solutions. They tested their solvent technology at TCM for two years. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the technology, as James Tian also mentioned. This was developed uh, in the solvent project, which was, I think, funded from Climate, and then further upscaled and uh, tested at TCM. And now currently being, among others, project uh, is chosen for the NURSEM project. So this is the technology which has been developed through Gasnova climate program and tested TCM and now being deployed. So that is the whole value chain we can see here. Alstom, that is the child ammonia technology they have been developed and testing at TCM and Shell Console, this is the technology vendor which has been testing their technology and developing their technology solution at TCM at, in two different campaigns. And that is the vendor for Fortum capture plant your selected technology vendor, and is one of the vendors who has built the largest CO2 capture plant in Boundary Dam in Canada. Uh, Carbon Clean Solution, Iron Engineering, another company from the US, Fluor is a large EPC. They have their own uh, CO2 capture technology. They have been at TCM and testing. And now recently we have been testing Mitsubishi is one of the major players, and if you know, the largest CO2 capture on forced combustion technology is Petranova, where MHI is the vendor, and this plant was in operation for three years. I think the capacity is around 1.4 to 1.5 million ton of CO2. And currently we are testing uh, emerging technologies on the third site, as I mentioned, MTR, Membrane Technology and Research from US, and TDA, this is also from US. So these are the proprietary technologies we have been helping to develop and they are in the market, but this needs to, con to be continuing. There is still a need to reduce the cost, improve it, to be more efficient, to be more compact. And then of course, open uh, campaigns we have also been running uh, and there were several uh, objectives for running these open campaigns. The first one was is to solve issues which are common to all these technologies. And for example, if I give you aerosols, if the flue gas coming, is containing aerosols that is going to be a challenge for most of the technologies. So that was common and that was a big research project where we looked into solution to solve it and this is solved. So we are able to operate with flue gas which is containing aerosols uh, and capture CO2 from this and be able to run it within the emission permit we have. And we have been publishing uh, about 60 different publications here. Uh, in addition, we also have been establishing baselines. Of course, there are too many technologies and the project owners, they need to, in some cases, they need to select. And it's, sometimes it could be difficult to compare. So for a good comparison, you need to have apple to apple comparison. We have the same plant, the same, high, uh, the, the same hardware, this only the, the technology which is different is only the solvent and the process parameters. So we run with a well-known solvent, which, which is MEA monoethanolamine. 
So we run, we, we run a baseline with it. Then we know how much energy it will take, how, many, how much CO2 we can capture, what will be the emission, what will be the solvent consumption, what will be the degradation and everything. That is a known technology, you have a known baseline. And then that baseline can be used as a benchmarking to other technologies and you can compare. And then of course you can calculate different KPIs and CAPEX and OPEX. Uh, yeah, uh, I can see that the time is running. So this is showing uh, a typical a generic amine plant. Uh, you have uh, some pretreatment of the flue gas coming in. You need to uh, either cool or heat the flue gas, depending on the flue gas temperature you will get, so that you can absorb CO2 efficiently. And once the CO2 is absorbed, the depleted flue gas is going out, and the liquid you are using the process as then going to a certain stripper system where you are heating up with steam. And when you heat it up, the reactions reverse. It is releasing CO2, so the CO2 is going up. Since TCM is a technology center for CO2 capture technology um, upscaling and testing, we are not compressing and storing. This is only catch and release type of facility. And that was the purpose. Uh, for the open campaigns and, of course, others, uh, when you are testing, you are testing different, tip, different type of parameters. And the objective is to reduce COPEX and OPEX. And OPEX, there are many parameters you can reduce, but some important, for example, the energy you will need to, to capture CO2. So you, you, you want to optimize where will be the minimum for a certain capture rate and a certain type of flue gas. And of course, you want to reduce the number of units, and you want to reduce the size of these units. And that all leads to reducing the capex and opex. So we have been doing these type of tests with the open solvents, like MEA. And I can show you like what are our learnings and how we see the development, and, and where is the So here, what we have done, we have taken the real learning from TCM. So this is not a, a, only theoretical. This we have taken the real learning from TCM facility. We have upscaled it to a certain size of 410 megawatt electric combined cycle gas turbine, integrated with the CO2 capture. And when we were running the MEA first campaign, we have a certain reference line. What were the cost of CO2 avoided? And the way we are calculating the cost of uh, CO2 avoided, that is the cost of electricity with capture minus cost of electricity without capture, and then you divide by the CO2 emission difference between these two cases. And that gives you the total cost of CO2 avoided. So there was a reference, and we have been optimizing the process and, and, and the capex and everything, and we were able to reduce that by 10 percent points. And then further improving and further stretching the targets, we were able to reduce it even further. And in 2018, we were able to reduce to the maximum, about 18 percent from what it was in 2012. So in six years, seven years' time, we were able to reduce the cost by about 18 percent. Uh, the, the, the testing activity at TCM, uh, as I mentioned, this technology still needs to be innovated. The cost needs to go down. We have. Our funnel of activities is full. Uh, we are currently, as I speak, we are preparing for a new test campaign with a company called RTI. We are there coming with a new solvent called non aqueous solvent, and we'll be testing in the TCM amine plant. MTR and TDA, they are running their technologies on the third side. NOSEPRA, we are planning for a test campaign with them next year, uh, where they will be testing the absorbent technology. And then another non-amine-based technology with a new concept of the hardware. So compared to the conventional towers, they have a rotating pack bit of uh, technology. And that is an EU-funded project and will be tested uh, next year at TCM on the third side. And this is also a type of adsorption technology, a more advanced called the metal organic framework. This is a EU-funded horizon project uh, and will be tested at TCM next year. Uh, we are providing our advisory services based on 
um, our learnings and unique capabilities. Uh, we are positioned, to, we are uniquely positioned to support you on HSE issues and reduce the risk the technical risk of the project and financial risk, and this way we can reduce the carbon capture costs. Because once you have reduced the cost, you are able to conduct the, the project and deploy it successfully. If you have risk, the cost will go up because you don't know what is coming. Uh, and with that, I think uh, I will stop. <laughs> if there are any questions, I will take them. Thank you very much, Ismail.